Procession on him 84. 84. the service in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Psalm for this evening service is Psalm 119 from verse 17 to 32. Psalm 119, 17 to 32.
hear the word of God as it is written in the first book of Moses, commonly called Genesis, and the second chapter, reading from verse 15 to 17 through to chapter 3 of 1 to 7. Genesis chapter 2, 15 to 17. Chapter 3, 1 to 7. The Lord God took the man and put him in the garden of Eden to work it and to care of it. And the Lord God commanded the man, you are free to eat from any tree in the garden, but you must not eat from the tree of knowledge of good and of evil. For when you eat from it, you will certainly die. The Lord God said, it is not good for man to be alone. I will make a helper suitable for him. Now the Lord God had formed out of the ground all the wild animals and all the birds in the sky. He brought them to the man to see what he would name them. And whatever the man called each living creature, that was its name. So the man gave names to all the livestock, the birds in the sky, and all the wild animals. But Adam had no helper. So the Lord God caused the man to fall into a deep sleep. And while he was sleeping, he took one of the man's rib and then closed up the place with the flesh. Then the Lord God made a woman from the rib he had taken out of man, and he brought her to the man. The man said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, for she was taken out of man. That is why a man leaves his father and mother and is united to his wife, and they become one flesh. Adam and his wife were both naked, and they felt no shame. Now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, We may eat fruit from the trees in the garden, but God did not say you must not eat fruit from the tree that is in the middle of the garden, and you must not touch it or you will die. You will not certainly die, the serpent said to the woman, for God knows that when you eat from it, your eyes will be opened. And you will be like God, knowing good and evil. When the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye, and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and ate it. She also gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he also ate it. Then the eyes of both of them were open, and they realized they were naked. So they sewed fig tree together, and made coverings for themselves. This is the word of God. Thanks be to God. Office him supplementary five. Supplementary five.
Psalm 98. The word of God, as it is written in the letter of Paul the Apostle to the Romans, chapter 5, from verse 12 to 19. Romans chapter 5, from verse 12 to 19. Therefore, just as sin entered the world through one man, and death through sin, and in this way, death came to all people because all sinned. To be sure, sin was in the world before the law was given. But sin is not charged against anyone's account where there is no law. Nevertheless, death reigned from the time of Adam to the time of Moses, even over those who did not sin by breaking a command, as did Adam, who is a pattern of the one to come. But the gift is not like 
the trespass. For if the many died by the trespass of one man, how much more did God's grace and the gift that came by the grace of one man, Jesus Christ, overflow to the many? Nor can the gift of God be compared with the result of one man's sin. The judgment followed one sin and brought condemnation, but the gift followed many trespasses and brought justification. For if by the trespass of one man, death reigned through that one man, how much more will those who receive God's abundant provision of grace and of gift of righteousness reign in life through the one man, Jesus Christ. Consequently, just as one trespass resulted in condemnation for all people, so also one righteous act resulted in justification and life for all people. For just as through the disobedience of that one man, the many were made sinners, so also through the obedience of the one man, the many will be made righteous. This is the word of God. The rest, Mr. Rater.
sins of them that are penitent, create, making us new and contrite hearts, that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may obtain thee, the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness of our sins, through Christ our Lord. and forty nights, give us grace to use such abstinence that our flesh being subdued to the spirit, we may ever obey thy holy godly motions in righteousness and true holiness to thy honor and glory who lives and reigneth within the unity of the Holy Spirit, ever one God world without And all just work do proceed. Give unto thy servants that peace which the world cannot give, that both our heart may be set to obey thy commandments, and also by thee we be de defended from the fear of our enemies, may pass our time in rest and quietness. <laughs> In our darkness, we beseech thee, O Lord, and by thy great mercy, defend us from the perils of this dangers of this night. For the love of thy Holy Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, ever one God, world without end. Let us pray. Almighty God, who has given us grace at this time, with one accord to make our common supplications unto thee, and thus promise that when two or three are gathered together in your name, thou will grant their requests. Fulfill, O Lord, the desires and petitions of thy servants and handmaidens, as may be most expedient for them. Granting us in this world knowledge of thy truth and in the world to come, life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Let's say the grace together say. Grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Be with us now Amen. Hymn 243. Two, four, three. Yeah. 
us pray. So, Lord, we continue with you. We thank you for how far you brought us. We thank you, new, for all things and in all things. Guide us with your Holy Spirit. Speak to us and touch our hearts. May we, individually, as a church, a nation, continue the good work and assignment you have given us to do. Till we are done, may we not quit. May we not turn back. Forever and ever, have we prayed with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, I share with you shortly the homely entitled, Finish Your Divine Assignment. Finish Your Divine Assignment. And it's from the readings that we had, Genesis chapter 2, 15 to 17, then chapter 3, 1 to 7, then Romans chapter 5, 12 to 19, and then Luke 13, 31 to 35. Beloved in the Lord, everyone born on this earth has an assignment to fulfill. Everyone has a divine assignment to which he or she is born to a particular family, locality, community, or a nation. It is God's general plan that we are doing what we are doing. So whatever occupation or job you are working with, it is the divine grace and plan of Almighty God that you do such work. Your individual inputs, whether positively or negatively, will impact, influence, and affect thousands of people now and in the years to come. In the book of Genesis chapter 2, reading for 15 to 17, and then chapter 3, 1 to 7, we see the disobedience of one man creating pandemonium and sin which has affected the entire globe. Adam and Eve brought death to mankind by their disobedience. Even though they are past and gone, generations upon generations are still facing hardship, pain, and eternal death. So in Romans chapter 5, verse 12 to 19, Paul retreats to us that just as through one man's sin entered the world, in the same vein, through one man, redemption and grace and salvation has also come to the world. Therefore, one man is as powerful as many men. What one man can do, it can affect many born and unborn generations. In Luke chapter 13, verse 31 to 35, now we see Jesus fulfilling his divine assignment. Jesus was preaching the synagogue, healing, touching many, and driving out demons. Then his arch enemies, the Pharisees, came to him and said, Say, kindly depart from here, for Herod would want to kill you. Then Jesus sent a reply through to them to Herod, that go and tell him that I am still, still driving out demons and fulfilling my assignment. Beloved in the Lord, the summary of all the lessons for us study this evening. Life comes with challenges, especially in the period that we are fulfilling our divine mandate. We are, therefore, encouraged to be focused, determined, and conscientious on the mission to which we are embarking in. 
whatever work that we are doing, whatever assignment that we are doing, whether political, economical, social, commercial, religious, we must not relent but forge ahead and complete it. We should ignore negative criticism as Jesus did with the Pharisees. There will be backbiting, there will be cut calls, there will be lukewarm attitude, there will be sharp tongues of members and others trying to bring us down or divert our attention. Two, we should weigh suggestions, counsels that come to us. As we fulfill our mandate, people will advise us. People will talk to us. Some will be genuine. Some may be for mischief hearts. The Pharisees came to Jesus and were asking, telling him, Say, depart from here, for Herod wanted to kill you. Meanwhile, they are in pact with Herod, and they never liked Jesus. So how come at such notice they were trying to help Jesus? So when people advise us, especially when you're on your mission, to fulfill your mandate, weigh by prayer, by careful consideration, and by sometimes advice from higher authority before you decide. The Pharisees are like some of us. We come and speak to you nicely, but behind your back, we want your downfall. Thirdly, whatever work that we are called to do, whether secular or sacred, has potential of impacting this generation and the next. We can alter destinies and our families, colleagues, even the church, by the work we do. And finally, shall we pray that grace may be abound for us and with us, even as we embark on our divine assignment on earth. It is our prayer that God keep us on focus. God will lead us on the right path. God will motivate us, guide and lead us, that we will not relent but forge on until the mission is accomplished. The blessing of God the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you for this hour. We commit ourselves to you. Thank you that you are Lord and our God. And that's far you brought us. Our prayer is that, Lord, keep us on our toes. Give us the grace to fulfill our divine assignment on this earth before the road is called up yonder. Give us, may this year be a good year unto all of us. Bless Ghana, even as we prepare for national election. May peace prevail in all corners of this country. In the name of the Father and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Have we prayed with thanksgiving? Amen. Amen. Recession now, hymn 27, the first and the last stanza. 2 7.
hymn 311, part 2. at this stage pray for our nation Ghana shall we intercede that there will be peace before during and after the elections pray that God Keep our bodies secure from any attacks. Pray for our leaders. Lord, in your mercy. Let us pray for the church that Christ came to build. Let us pray for full spirituality. Let us pray that the church will be one and a place for solace and salvation. Pray that the church will be united to build and save souls. Lord, in your mercy, let us pray for our families. Let us pray for our children. Let us pray for our siblings. Remember your spouses. Pray that the family will be united to build a holy church and blissful nation. Lord, in your mercy, Anima Christi, 
Soul of Christ, sanctify me. Body of Christ, save me. Blood of Christ, inebriate me. Water from the side of Christ, wash me. Passion of Christ, strengthen me. O oh good Jesus, hear me. Within your wounds, hide me. Permit me not to be separated from you. From the wicked foe, defend me. At the hour of my death, call me. And bid me come to you. That with your saints, I may praise you forever and evermore. Hymn 309, 309, part 2. bread from heaven. Let us pray. O oh God, who and thy wonderful sacrament has led unto us a memorial of your passion, grant us we beseech thee so to venerate the sacred mysteries of thy body and blood that we may ever perceive within ourselves the fruit of the redemption who lives and reigns with the unity of the Holy Spirit, ever one God, world without end.
say after me. Blessed be God. Blessed be his holy name. Blessed be Jesus Christ, true God and true man. Blessed be Jesus Christ, true God and true man. Blessed be the name Jesus, the name of Jesus. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Blessed be his most sacred heart. Blessed be Jesus in the most holy sacrament of the altar. Blessed be the great mother of God, Mary, most holy. Blessed be the great mother of God, Mary, most holy. Blessed be her holy and immaculate conception. Blessed be her holy and immaculate conception. Blessed be her glorious assumption. Blessed be her glorious assumption. Blessed be the name of Mary, Virgin and Mother. Blessed be Blessed be Saint Joseph, a spouse most chaste. Blessed be Saint Joseph, a most chaste spouse. Blessed be God in his angels and in his saints. Blessed be God in his angels and his saints. Mm -hmm. 